up guys, Stark here, and in today's video, I am going to be doing the character spotlight for BB. Now, BB is the event character for the new event, and uh, she is a really cool character, and you know, as always with all of the welfare servants, she is definitely a character that you definitely want to go ahead and pick up. So BB is a 4 star as all other event characters are and she is a new class that is coming into the game and that is going to be called the Moon Cancer. Now the Moon Cancer is as of this moment exclusive to BB. She's the only character in the game that will fall under this category. Now technically there are two characters in that category but the other one is just the summer version of BB. So BB is the only character that is the Moon Cancer class. So even just that alone, you're going to want to get her just because she's the only one in that class. But they do have benefits as well. Moon Cancers will be strong against Avengers. So anytime you're going against an Avenger, definitely a good option there. Um, they are weak to rulers though. So uh, it's, it's not a, a good class, not a bad class really. Um, but the fact that BB is the only one in that class is definitely unique and you should definitely be going for that because of that and again you know Avengers are tough to kill they're very aggressive and BB would be a pretty good option to uh, deal with the Avengers and rulers aren't really that common either so it's not like it's going to get in the way of your everyday playing if you do have BB on your team and you know in those rare situations where you do have to fight a ruler you could just substitute BB out for somebody else as for her stats though she is going to go up to level 80 and at level 80 she will have 13,643 HP and 8,197 attack. This will rank her 30th overall in HP and 100th overall in attack and if you do decide to grail her out she will end up with 16,542 HP and 9,925 attack. Her star absorption is 52 and her star generation is 14.7% and for her Noble Phantasm generation is going to be 0.61 on the attacks and 3% on the defense. So now moving on to her Servant skills, BB is more of a support character, but at the same time she's a support character that needs support and she's kind of a selfish support character. So it's really weird the way BB works, but she is very unique and she is very good. So BB's first skill is going to be the 10 crowns D and this will remove one ally's debuffs as well as recover their HP and then this will grant them debuff immunity one time over the course of three turns. So this is a really good support skill. At level 10 you'll be able to heal 3000 HP on a four turn charge time so you can spam this skill to no end. Uh, it's going to be very helpful being able to completely cleanse debuffs for one ally as well as heal them and grant them debuff immunity. Very good skill. You can use it on any character, it's not very exclusive to BB herself, so that's going to be very good, gives you a lot of options and utility with that. Her second skill is going to be the Aurea Bora C, which will remove one enemy's evasion or and or invincibility buffs. This will also have a chance to stun that enemy for one turn. So her first skill is very helpful for her allies, and then the second skill here is going to be very helpful going against the enemies, being able to remove evasion or invincibility and or invincibility. Uh, that's going to be huge, you know, it doesn't just ignore it, it just completely removes it from that enemy. So that is going to be huge. It is a little situational, but still is going to be very huge, very helpful against those enemies that have it. And even if they don't, then you still have a chance to stun them. And this will be a 100% chance at level 10 on a 6 turn charge time, so this is going to be a low cooldown as well. So uh, she's got some pretty awesome skills here for the first two skills. And uh, the third and final skill is the reason why I called her Selfish a little bit, and it's going to be the Self Modification EX, which will increase her own critical damage for three turns, and this will also increase her own critical star absorption for three turns. So again, this is why she's Selfish, and if she could use this on any ally, that would be insane. Uh, she'd be so much better than she actually is, and she's still really good to begin with. Uh, but she does only increase it for herself. Uh, the problem here though is that she doesn't have a way of reliably creating the stars and that's why I said she's a support character that needs support because you do need to get those stars for her because the way this skill works is she's going to increase her star absorption by 800% for three turns and then you know you, you, with that you're not going to have too many stars left over unless you're going to be generating a ton of stars uh, so BB's pretty much going to monopolize those stars for three turns and you really need to have a way of getting those stars to make this skill worth it. And 
you know, on top of that, if you can get a lot of stars, then you can get BB her stars, as well as getting your other characters' stars as well, so everyone can get in on the party there and do some good critical damage. This is on a 5 turn charge time at maximum level, so that is going to be a really good thing as well. She has fantastic cooldowns on all of her skills, they're all really low, you can definitely abuse her skills very often. So overall, she's got a very good kit of skills, uh, she's got some great offense, some great support, some great debuffs for the enemies. So overall, she has a really good kit of skills. Moving on to her passives, she has three passives. The first one is going to be the Territory Creation A, which will increase her arts card effectiveness by 10%. The second one is the Item Construction A, which will increase her debuff chance by 10%. And then third and finally will be the Magic Resistance, which will increase her debuff resistance by 17.5%. Moving on to her ascension, since she is a event servant, she will have an event exclusive item that you have to get do during the BB Strike back event. So make sure you do that, you can complete the missions and get all of those items in order to ascend her up to her maximum level. Uh, so not much else to talk about here, as an event servant, there's not much to go on. So then for BB skill enhancements to max out her skills from 1 to 10, uh, as a Moon Cancer she is going to need some pretty weird requirements, uh, just like every other extra class in the game. So for her, she's going to need 14 Gems of Caster and Gems of Rider. She's going to need 14 Magic Gems of Caster and Rider, and 14 Secret Gems of Caster and Rider. In addition to that, she will also need 4 Primordial Anugos, 4 Lamp of Evil Ceilings, 7 Spirit Roots, 7 Scarab of Wisdoms, 1 Crystallized Lore, and 27,200,000 Quantum Pieces. So on that note, we're going to be talking about uh, which skills to level up first, and I do believe it is a toss-up between her first two skills. Uh, basically, it just depends on if you want to use her as a support character for your allies or a debuffer for the enemies. Uh, so whichever one you're going to plan on using her more as, I would recommend leveling that skill first, closely followed by the second one. And then her third and final one that you want to level up is going to be the self-modification. Unless you do want to use her as a critical damage dealer and then you want to do that first. Although I do strongly, you know, advise you not to do that. Uh, she's definitely better off as a support character, so that's just my recommendation though. You guys can do whatever you want with BB. So now moving on to her command cards and her normal phantasm. For her command card deck, she will have two quick, two arts, one buster, and the hit counts will be four on her quick, three on her arts, and one on her buster, with her extra attack also having four hits. So she's got some pretty solid hits there on her quick and arts cards. So she has some decent star generation there, but obviously, you know, the way her third skill works, she's going to need a lot more than that to be to make it effective. As for her Noble Phantasm, uh, it's going to be an Arts Noble Phantasm, and it's going to be a pretty good one as well. It will deal damage to a single enemy that will hit pretty hard, and in addition to that, it'll also increase the Noble Phantasm gauge of all of your other allies by 20%. And on the overcharge effect, this will decrease debuff resistance for a single enemy for 3 turns. So this is going to be a pretty powerful one. You know, being a welfare servant, you can get her maxed out to level 5 really fast. Just do the event, get all the characters, copies, and you're good to go. So you can do a ton of damage there. It has some great effects. You know, being able to increase Noble Phantasm gauge is nice. It being an Arts Noble Phantasm means you're going to be able to get Arts Chains off and get that Noble Phantasm going and you could potentially spam this you know multiple turns in a row and if not you still have the gauge increase for your other allies as well so overall bb is going to open up the pathway for a lot of noble phantasm spam so overall very good noble phantasm there speaking of her noble phantasm i will go ahead and play a video of her noble phantasm for you guys to check out so uh, i will see you guys in a couple seconds as you watch the noble phantasm Alright, so we are back. Uh, pretty cool little phantasm there. And now we're going to go ahead and talk about some of the craft essences that you could use on BB. And first up is going to be her Maximum Bond Craft Essence, which is going to be the Roadside Dream. So while equipped, this will increase BB's Quick Arts and Buster Card effectiveness of all of her allies by 8% while she's in the field. So this is a pretty good one, a universal buff to all of the cards. Not bad. 
Next up, we have a fragment of 2030. This one's going to be very good, being able to get 8 critical stars or 10 critical stars every single turn. Since BB does need stars to do some pretty solid damage, being able to have a fragment of 2030 on her to get those stars reliably every single turn is going to be very helpful if you are going to use her as your damage dealer. So, not a bad option there. Another ending is going to be another good one, being able to increase her arts card effectiveness and her critical strength. So again, this ties into her third skill, being able to get more damage out of it. And then finally, for formal craft, you know, you get that flat increase to your arts card effectiveness by 25% or 30% on the max limit break. A good option, you know, if you don't have another ending, this would be a really good option to use, be able to get that bonus to your arts card effectiveness. A lot of options you can use with BB, it just kind of depends on what you're going for, what strategy you're going to use her with. So now moving on to some of the servants you can use with BB. For the free to play characters, I picked a couple, well I didn't pick a couple, I picked one uh, different one that I don't usually talk about, and that is going to be Medea. And you know, I really picked her because of the Noble Phantasm spam, you know she is an arts caster as well. She has the potential to Noble Phantasm spam, being able to get a refund of her Noble Phantasm with her own Noble Phantasm. So you can combo that with BB's Noble Phantasm, they're both arts, so you can get the arts chains there, and you just get a whole bunch of increased to your Noble Phantasm. So it opens the possibilities to do some really good damage, really good Noble Phantasm spam, and uh, overall I think it's a pretty good combination. Next up we have Hans. Hans, you know, he is one of the better support characters in the game, don't have to talk about him too much, being able to, you know, increase the attack, defense, heal, he's also an arts character, so you get the arts chains there, <clears throat> his Noel Phantasm is also arts, again, you know, you get the chains and you can spam your Noel Phantasm very often, uh, it's going to be very good, obviously Hans will be a lot better for global players when he does get his buffs, uh, this will not be for a little while, so we do have to wait for that, uh, but even without that, Hans is still very good, and definitely shouldn't shy away from using him. Unless, of course, you have uh, some of the other characters here we're about to talk about. First one being Tamamona Mai. She is the ideal character for any arts card deck, so, uh, you know, you want to throw her in there. You know, she's with Merlin here. Merlin's your buster. Tamamona's your, your arts card character. Uh, so you definitely want to throw her onto your team if you do have her. Uh, obviously, with BB being an arts character, then you want to, you know, take full advantage of that. And then uh, Tamamo can also increase the Noble Phantasm gauge of all the allies as well. So pretty much if you use her with Medea and BB, you're going to have a full team of Arts Noble Phantasms, going to be able to getting a lot of Noble Phantasm generation, and you can just go crazy spamming your Noble Phantasms like mad, and you're good to go. And then finally, for the fourth and final character, I have Joan of Arc. You know, she is another character that fits into the Arts build with Noble Phantasms as well. She, you know, she can... She's more of like, uh, for maybe like longer battles where she can stall out and, you know, apply invincibility and heal and stuff. Uh, and also, BB can remove the stun on Joan if you do not have the upgrade to that Noble Phantasm. So, a lot of good things that go in there. Uh, Joan also does have a stun, so you can do that with BB and kind of have a stun lock. And overall, it's just a very good combination. Joan can also get stars for BB to use, so... Overall, I think uh, there's some pretty good team combinations out there that you could use with BB, and you can do some pretty wild and crazy things, and do a lot of Noble Phantasm spam. As for her overall star rankings, for her stats, she's going to get 4.8 out of 5. This is primarily due to her high, her high HP. Uh, she's very low on attack, but overall it does balance out pretty well, so 4.8 stars there. For her skills, I am giving her 4.5 stars out of 5. Uh, this was definitely a tough decision, I was kind of weighing my options, but I did decide to give her 4.5 stars. She has a very good kit of skills with very low cooldowns, which means you can spam the skills, and although it is a little bit selfish of her third skill being able to only give herself the bonuses to criticals, you can't take too many points away from that, she does have some really good skills outside of that, so I think that is a pretty fair ranking there for her skills. And then for her normal Phantasm, I gave her 4 stars. Uh, it's got, uh, you can do a pretty good amount of damage with it, you know, considering she's a welfare servant. Uh, it doesn't do that much damage in the grand scheme of things, but it does a pretty fair amount of damage, and it has some pretty good effects as well, being able to increase your allies' normal phantasm gauge. So, overall, you know, I think it's a pretty strong normal phantasm. It's definitely going to be a very helpful one when you do get it off, and you can spam it pretty often as well, so uh, definitely got some points for that. 
For her survivability, I am going to give her four stars in this one as well. Uh, she does have that first skill, which has a pretty good heal, and it has a very low cooldown, so you can spam it quite often. You know, 3,000 HP every four turns. Um, you know, that's pretty fair. Even if you are using it on other allies, you know, you can get that refund pretty quickly and be able to use it again if you do have to do that. And she does have really high HP as well, obviously in the top tier for the HP. So uh, four stars is pretty good there. Uh, for her versatility though, I am only going to give her three stars. Now this might be a little bit low, you know, maybe we could have gone with three and a half. But um, as a Moon Cancer, she doesn't get too many bonuses from class advantages, you know, unless you're going against an Avenger. You're not gonna have too much there for that. But at the same time, you can use her really as a support character. So, you know, she does have some viability there. But again, she is a support character that needs support. You know, if you are using BB, you'd ideally like to use damage with her. So you need some sort of support to get those critical stars on top of her skills. And she doesn't do that much damage unless she is going against an Avenger. And they're not very common. So I'm kind of trying to just justify the low ranking here. But um, for free to play characters or free to play players and you know, people who don't have a lot of good characters or good support characters, this is going to be a higher ranking for you because, you know, obviously she's a good support character, but a lot of people have other support characters that they can use, and she kind of just falls off because she doesn't get class advantages. So, um, I guess it just depends on who you have, but overall, I think because of that, she does have a little bit of a lower ranking for versatility. Overall, though, that will give her a 4.1 out of 5, though. Still pretty high ranking there, and she is a fantastic character, so definitely don't miss out on getting her. Again, she is the only Moon Cancer in the game, so you definitely want to take full advantage of that and get her. But yeah, guys, that is going to wrap up another character spotlight. I will have the rest of the characters coming out soon for the Alter Egos, so uh, stay tuned for those. And as always, I have the links below to my Twitter, Twitch, Patreon, and Discord, so feel free to check those out. And I will see you guys next time.